All right, welcome back. Now our GMC tweet of the night, and this is from ESPN. Serena Williams advances after beating number two ranked Annette Canavete. Is that how you say her name, Chris? Oh, are you putting me on the spot? <laughs> All I know is that I believe she is from Estonia. What I really know is that Serena is easily the greatest uh, female tennis player of all time in the pantheon of greatest tennis players of all time, period. And I, I don't know, I was kicking this around before the show, Richie. Is there a greater female athlete ever? I mean, I think she stands alone at the top of the mountain here. I, I, she really does. She's a phenom. It's, we, we laud what Tom Brady is doing in that sport at 45 years old. Given Serena's age relative to most of her peers and the physical demands placed on any tennis player, men's or women's tennis, what she is doing is just unbelievable. I, I don't know how, I think everybody is, but I don't know how anybody couldn't be rooting for her to somehow finish the Cinderella run with one more Grand Slam. I wouldn't disagree with you. I, I can't think of anyone that uh, the best female athlete ever. She has Simone to be Biles, there. like for sheer dominance, Biles is up there, but there aren't many, man. Um, also, King Richard, great movie, by the way. I think so. Never saw it. Not a sports. I don't watch a ton of sports movies. See, you've, again, you have exposed me <laughs> as somebody who probably doesn't check all the boxes that he should as a sports guy. All right, let's go out to Tim and Shayla. How are you doing, Tim? Uh, long time listener. And Malsey, I, I think we're lockstep on, in, our, in our thoughts here. Um, I think Pitt's the only team and the NCAA has all five offensive linemen returning. And I think Pitt, on both sides of the ball, offense and defensive line, just dominate tomorrow. I mean, I can't see, unless there's tons of turnovers or, you know, injuries, that kind of thing, I see, we, I, I see us, you know, beating that spread easily. As far as the ACC, um, Clemson doesn't worry me. They're, 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 they're replacing two, two coordinators, not one, two, offense and defense. Although the Miami game at the end, we always well, lose Cle Miami. Clemson, I mean, you don't have to worry about Clemson until you get to the ACC championship yeah. game. They, here's the problem with them. They're always going to have dudes, as I like to say. You win in the NFL maybe when the talent gap is so thin with great quarterback play and coaching and play within the margins. In college, you win if you got more dudes. By the way, I think uh, Hannah Mears, our esteemed producer tonight, said in my ear something that I was pretty sure was correct. West Virginia is also bringing back their entire offensive line. I don't think that they should be able to match up even so uh, with Pitt. The Miami, Richie, doesn't the Miami thing just so weird to you, by the way? You know, Caller mentions it. There have been times when Pitt has gone in and been inarguably a better football team than Miami, and it's not just that they lose most of the time. It's like they get humiliated in a lot yeah. of these games. I don't get it. I remember a couple of those on Thanksgiving. Um, you know, I think this game's going to be close. I mean, West Virginia won the last three and won 11, 10 and 9, 8. I mean, everyone remembers the 07 game, the one, the 15th anniversary of, of the 13 to 9 game but you know they played a couple years after uh, and West Virginia's won the last three games I think this game is going to be close just because of the makeup of the backyard brawl but a bit maybe maybe it won't be because maybe these players don't understand the rivalry I mean most of the some of these guys were like eight years old nine years old when the last time these two teams played I don't I don't use that history as mattering and this series has produced some blowouts a lot of the times it seems like West Virginia is the team doing the uh, the, the, the routing here uh, but I think Pitt's got the better squad. I, here's why I think you could be right, though, that the game might be close. One, the spread's just not a ton, so obviously yeah. Vegas thinks that this is a, an interesting battle. I think Pat Narduzzi, even when his teams have looked really good, they haven't always just routed teams on the score sheet. It's, it's been, hey, Pat Narduzzi's team controlled this game, but there's sort of a conservative element to the coaching style at times that I think against good competition, they would control play but maybe only win by 10 or so. I mean, this is the game you want to route for sure. It's got the Frank in Connecticut. How you doing, Frank? Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for taking my call. What's up? Uh, yeah, I'm extremely bullish on Pitt as well. I'm with Chris. I haven't pegged it 11-1. Um, I, I really think Slope's being slept on like a national scale. I, I think he really has something to prove coming in from USC. I think the skill positions are just capable as last year with Bartholomew Wayne. I think Mumfield's going to be a great player. Uh, but I want to get your guys' thoughts on the running back position. I mean, you got Bank Abanacanda, Davis, and Hammond. Do you see that being like a committee kind of thing? How do you guys see that working out? I like Abanacanda a lot, but the guy I really like there, I don't know, maybe this is just me talking. The guy who always has intrigued me in that bunch, Richie, is Hammond. Every time I see the guy get a carry, I feel like something, you know, exciting happens. I feel like there's that special burst that you see with certain college runners. So 
a band of candidate to me is going to be the obvious workhorse and I think he deserves it. But Hammond is somebody that I'm really watching closely to see if he can have a breakout and sort of give them an extra dimension to that offense with just another very explosive player in that backfield. You know, I, 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 I think it's going to be a committee type because that's what you, they usually, you, you know, have done. That's the MO. I mean, you look back to 18, 19, uh, you know, when they went to the Sun Bowl, I remember. Uh, you, you had two pretty good running backs, and I think that's what they'll continue to do. I'm just anxious to see how this offense unfolds. I mean, it's going to be different than last year because uh, of no Whipple, no Pickett, obviously no Addison. But you do have good receivers, like you just said, Frank. I mean, um, you have good running backs, and you have a good quarterback. I'm anxious to see Slovis in person because, look, I mean, remember when they, they brought a guy in by the name of, what was it, Matt Brown? Or Max Brown. Max Brown. I couldn't even remember his name because he's so forgetful. But everyone hyped him up, this five-star yeah, but, guy but from Slovis USC. Slovis has done it, though. Like, Slovis has actually brought the goods before. I know his, his career at USC kind of fizzled out for various reasons that college careers do sometimes. But as a freshman in a big-time conference – in a highly competitive situation, he brought it. He was great. Like, we've, you know, there's not the question of can he do it. I think with Max Brown, there was the real question, can he do it? We know Slovis can do it. It's will he do it here? Ah, we'll see you tomorrow. Let's go out to Frank and Moon. How you doing, Frank? Frank and Moon, what's up? Hey, Rich. Hey, Jeff. Uh, hey, guys. Let me, let me ask you a question. Like, this West Virginia team, um, <clears throat> This coach came from Appalachian State, right? Is he really a recruiter? I mean, that's the biggest. No one's talking about the West Virginia team. Does I can tell you this coach? about Neil Brown. If we get all these little emails sent to us in our glamorous jobs as sports talk hosts for the fan, Richie, and we get these promotional emails from betting companies or odds makers, Neil Brown, the odds on favorite to be the first Big 12 coach fired this season. So that should tell you how people, maybe the Sharps, feel about the job that he's been doing. Is he a good enough recruiter? I don't. West Virginia, let me put it this way, to answer that the call more directly, do you see or are you hearing anything, Richie, about West Virginia having sort of the caliber of skill guy that they typically do? I'm not. No, they fell off the map. I think part of it is because they're in the Big 12. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's not the West Virginia team. It's not the West Virginia players that we normally see. Uh, with guys like Rich Rodriguez and even, uh, the, uh, it slips my mind, the last coach that they had down there. Um, Bill Stewart? No, after Bill Stewart, the, the crazy coach with the long hair. Holgerson. Holgerson Come yeah. on, Dana Holgo. I couldn't, even th I, I couldn't think of the name. Sorry, Could be found Chris. at a casino near you. All right. Well, I, I, I just don't, I, they don't have the same caliber of players. So, you know, and it's, it, it's just because we don't really cover the team anymore. They're in the Big 12. They're traveling all over the country. They're not around, but now it's a little, it means a little bit more, West Virginia and Pitt. All right, backyard brawl. We'll talk more about it after the break. Stay right there.